Okay, let's try this again. All right, Old Man's Adventures here. Today we are out at the Elizabethtown Nature Park. Uh, they're mowing the grass in multiple places, so we got interrupted first time I tried to start. But anyway, um, here with the Sonata uh, Roamer e-bike, full suspension. Um, we're going to see how it handles the uh, the park, trails in the park, and we're going to go around Freeman Lake. I, I like the fact that its uh, battery and controller are all concealed in that uh, in that top tube, which is not a tube at all. It's a uh, piece of rectangular tube. I guess it's tube. Anyway, thousand watt uh, hub motor, um, disc brakes. Uh, as I said, dual suspension. I think the, the front suspension, as you can see, it's branded SMLRO. And uh, I, I have, you know, I don't know why it's a Sonata e-bike, but I don't know why Sonata has no name on it. Uh, you never see Sonata on it anywhere, or Roamer for that matter. You see SMLRO. Um, but let's, let's go over it front to back. Okay, first of all, we got uh, 26 by 4.0 knobby tires, Chow Yang branded. Um, the wheels um, are fat tire wheels, disc brake, and it's mechanical disc brake. Um, the, uh, the suspension fork is branded SMLRO as well. Uh, it is steel. Uh, a magnet stuck to everything except the yoke at the top. It does have lockout and it does work and it has a preload adjustment. Uh, however, I will say it has, uh, to my estimation, way too much flex. I do not like when you put the front brake on and you rock the bike, you can see the forks flex and I don't, and you can also see the, uh, the bridge across flex i don't like that uh if i was going to uh, buy this bike i would i would count on putting a new suspension fork on um, it has uh seven speed well let's keep going from the front let's go to the cockpit okay it has this janky uh oh the the wheels are painted they're not anodized uh, i forgot to mention that but the wheels are painted they're not anodized uh, they look good, but they are painted. Uh, the cockpit, okay. The bars. Uh, first of all, we have a the th we have a full grip throttle, and uh, I hate these grips. By the way, I, I hate that I can't change them, or it doesn't appear that I can change them. You have this key switch here that you turn on to. Then you have to go over here and turn the controller on. Uh, you have Shimano seven speed index, Mickey Mouse shifter, just like every uh, e-bike I've ever uh, looked at. The, uh, the bars are aluminum. The stem is aluminum. The uh, levers are alloy. Um, the controller or the little interface, whatever you want to call it, is uh it's uh, very easy to use there you can see its functions it has your speedometer your pedal assist mode your battery indicator your odometer uh, you also have a button here for the light which as you can see it works all right and it's pretty bright you also have a horn button and that's pretty loud too, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Uh, like the horn button. Once again, alloy levers, uh, and they do have cutoffs, brake cutoffs for the uh, drive motor. Uh, the frame is aluminum, and uh, 
you have a uh, coil for or coil uh, suspension shock with 150 millimeters of travel or no I'm sorry 150 millimeters eye to eye uh, it hasn't quite bottomed with me yet I'm heavy guy 270 plant pounds roughly uh, the weight limit on this bike is 330 pounds which I found uh, impressive uh, given my weight, it's a, a thousand watt hub drive. Uh, the crank set is a pro wheel and it's huge. Uh, 100 and, I think it's 180 millimeter crank arms along with a probably 50 some tooth. I'd have to look, I'll have to look it up. Um, sprocket. Uh, then as you come back, you got the typical Shimano tourney. This is a tourney TZ shifter or derailleur. Uh, you have the Shimano uh, freewheel, a thousand watt hub motor, as I said. Uh, this particular bike came with the rack and the fenders. Uh, they called it a free gift, uh, which as you can see, if I, I go to the front fender here, just to give you an idea. They're pretty flimsy. Uh, I've seen these advertised on Amazon and stuff before, and, and uh, I just thought, eh. Uh, the rear one, I saw where another person had put on there that the, the rear one they kept from flexing by putting a couple holes in it and a zip tie through the rack there. So that's what I did there to keep that from, from happening. Uh, and it's pretty solid now. I mean, it's solid. I like that. Uh, if I could solid that front one up, I'd feel a lot better. Okay, 1,000 watt hub motor. Uh, forget the brand name of it. It's not a Bafang. Uh, it is CE certified, whatever that means. Um, let's see. We got us a kickstand on it that's just like uh, basically the kickstand on a lot of Walmart bikes. Uh, it seems sufficient. It, it, it's not uh, not a big clunky kickstand. Uh, the rack, when I went to install the rack, uh, a lot of people complained that you had to bend these uh, bend the arms. Well, the only bar arms you have to bend are these right here because they come stuck out a little bit. Uh, so yeah, you do have to bend those in a little bit to meet the to meet the holes, but it wasn't a big deal. Uh, the rack is sufficient. Uh, I like it. It uh, it seems to be strong. Um, we have uh, uh, mechanical disc brakes, thousand watt hub motor. Uh, definitely do not like the grips, uh, but we'll see what we can do about that a little later on. The seat uh, is actually pretty comfortable so far. Uh, I've not driven it, I've not ridden it much, just around the neighborhood. This will be the first time it's been off-road, really, except in my yard. Uh, so, anyway, let's give it a try. See how it does. Alright. Our key switch is on. I'm going to give it throttle only as soon as this car passes. We're in pedal assist one. And here we go. And it feels a little stuttery. It's like stuttering until it gets up about five miles an hour. Then it's smooth. All right, and pedal assist, uh, let's see, let me get down slower than, I do not feel the stuttering with it in pedal assist mode. Just not using the throttle at all. All right, so. I'm in first gear on the, on the uh, derailleur, I'm gonna. Oh, we had a 
heard that. That sounded like hit something hit. I uh, don't think I bottomed out the shock because of 850 pounds per inch. That shouldn't have been an issue. The ride is pretty good. Not having any issues with the ride at all. It's uh, pretty smooth. Okay, not a great climber. Let's pedal assist up one. See if that helps. All right, that helped. All right. All right, there was that little section. I'm using throttle only now. Not doing any pedaling at all. And I'm impressed. Seems to be doing okay. Now it doesn't appear to like uphill very much. No, you gotta help it on uphills. Now I'm gonna do this again. It's not too bad helping it pedal uphill. All right. All right. So in pedal assist too. It's doable. That hill, that's a pretty good hill. And it is doable. All right. All right, we'll go down again. This is a pretty good little downhill here. You can get some serious speed. rattles a little bit. Alright. There we go. Alright, now let's go around this other way. A little bit of rattle. Not too bad, but I'm guessing it's the battery. I'm back to using uh, throttle only.
and uh, now I'm pedaling again. coming to a creek crossing and always with the other bike I was worried about this because of the wow that's deep that appears really deep I don't know well let's try it and see what happens All right, we made it. These handlebars, they're like I said, they're aluminum bars and they are 720 millimeter in length. It kind of uh, surprised me that they were aluminum bars because that's one place that most e bike manufacturers cheat. up a bit because I know you guys don't want to sit around and watch me go around the lake for an hour so anyway uh, things I liked about the bike the seat is uh, comfortable and looks good the 720 millimeter aluminum bars I like those uh, no problem there the digital display it looks good uh, all your information is there uh, functions it's easy to operate great no problem the full suspension is good the only thing I would improve is the rear spring needs to be stiffer. This bike has a 330 pound rating and I'm 270 and I bottomed it a couple of times on these easy bunny trails. Okay, uh, it has slightly more power than a 500 watt bike and let me tell you it's very slight. Um, light and horn. I like the light and the horn. They will both work well and I like the fact that the bike folds in half because it makes it easy to throw up in the back of a truck. Things that I didn't like about the bike. It has a weird tendency to stutter when you take off with throttle only from a standing start. I, I don't know how to explain it other than that. I was disappointed in its torque and climbing ability. Uh, the whole throttle grip and housing with the LEDs and key switch, I don't like. Uh, the floppy front fender, I don't like. The folded bike is awkward to handle and needs some sort of strap or something to keep it folded. It also needs some sort of bumper pad to prevent scratching the front wheel when you fold it because the wheel comes in contact with the kickstand bracket and it will scratch the paint off if that wheel rolls any while you are folded. Uh, also the fork flex can't stand the fork flex it has to go. Uh, the uh, speedo goes to zero uh, when you're coast that's no good either. Yeah, throttle C helps out there, and I don't get that. I don't get why I don't get full power to the wheel in pedal assist.
All right, let's see what it'll do on pedal assist five. Going out to drive here. Throttle only, pedal assist five. this mode and see what it does. Alright, ready? Here we go. No throttle. Pedal assist only. Seventh. Boy, it sucks the battery. Okay, let's look at this flex. See if y'all can see this. All right, by the way, this came with the brakes backwards, but I changed them. All right, look at that. See that flexing? Yeah, it's totally unacceptable in my book. But, and it does have some stiction. Yeah, it doesn't really want to turn back to 100%. Rear shock feels okay. All right, well, there we go. But, but, uh, I think it had eight miles on it. Now it's got 14. Uh, everything seems to work, uh, though not necessarily to my liking and like i said i'd love to get rid of these grips hate them uh, but i don't know this one's made into that throttle assembly i don't know if that'd be possible and it's got this stupid key switch on it too so anyway all right well, i'm gonna fold it up and put it back in the truck and uh, i guess i'll let you watch because you may uh, learn something out of this because to fold it, let's look at how you fold it here. To fold it, you come over here and you have this, it says open, you pull it open like that and it's ready to fold. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Just crazy as all get out. So, let's fold it. And you can set it on the stand. It's got a, a stand that you can set it on. Now we'll get the truck ready. And there it is folded. Now, 
I'll try to do this. Okay. I forget how I picked this up before, just like that. Just like that. There we are. She's in the back of the truck. And it's a short bed truck, so, you know, it would be any other, uh, altogether it would be too long. Uh, or you'd have to have a flat tire uh, rack to go under the wheels. So that's my review of the Sonata Roamer. Would I recommend it? Maybe. It's not the powerhouse I expected. However, it does have some admirable qualities. I hope I've provided you with information that will make it easier to decide if the Roamer is right for you. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and tune in again for another Old Man's Adventure.